Hello and welcome everyone to a new series called DIY Do It Yourself in which I will be taking on the insane undertaking of making an MMO while making it on YouTube while making it available to play in a browser although I won't be making it available to play right away because there won't be anything to play because I'll still be making something to play Are you still with me? Now, I'm not going to make too much of a point of um, why I think I can do this because common sense dictates that you can't. I'm just going to get straight into it, shall I? First thing, I want to show you some of the research I've been doing for um, this. So one thing I did is I made this little animation test. Um, I hope you can actually see this properly in the video, but whatever. So what I did was I animated this in um, a 2D, what was it called again? Sprite? I don't know, some 2D animation thing. And it's just little bits of one single sprite and then you rotate them and move them and you create animations. And that's important because that way I can actually do all the animations I need inside this lifetime, plus all the coding. So that's a thing. Then if you show, if I look at this, this is a, a tile test I did like ages ago to um, test some, you know, isometric tactical terrain stuff. This is loaded from a height map. In theory, this should generate from random um, height maps as well. I have some experience making those. So that's basically going to be the terrain for the game. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure what the game is going to be called. If you if you know a good name, even though you know nothing about this game, please leave it in the comments. Um, the first thing that we need to do is to connect the client and the server. Now I have done a bit of setup beforehand. So there's this one, which is the client. And if I start that, you will see, hello YouTube, hello YouTube. It's a little window that says, hello YouTube. It doesn't really do anything more than that, but you know, that's all set up. So I don't have to futz with that for hours on camera. And then there is this thing, which is the server. Now, this is an IO completion port server. I don't know what that means, but it, I think it means it's good. It can handle a lot of traffic. It uses WebSockets um, because to have this playable both in an in like a .NET executable and a browser, you need to use WebSockets to communicate with the server. So it uses web, WebSockets. And, you know, it just, well, you could connect if the client did connect, but the client doesn't connect because I haven't created that yet. And this is already a three and a half minute intro. So I'll, we'll be speeding things up a little bit. Hmm, this is not the right thing. Where did I put that? I put it over here. So this is the sequence that you need to do a secure login. First, you need to have the client collect connect to a login server. This is, by the way, for games that have a separate login server and game server, which is probably something that you want. So when the login server goes down, the game server doesn't and vice versa. Although if you don't have a game server, then you don't have much use for a login server, do you? So you connect to the login server, you use SSL because bleh, you have to send your username and password. I mean, you just need SSL for that. Um, the login server verifies the login by using a, a salt and the hash in the database. Now, don't be an idiot and don't store your passwords as plain text because if your database gets stolen, all the passwords are in the open and you're an idiot. So don't be an idiot. If you're not, if you don't be an idiot, then you're not an idiot. It's, it's cause and effect, really. Okay, so a, a salt is basically just a random number that you append to um, the password 
and then you hash it and then you store that hash in the database okay so the client sends the password and the the server takes the salt and the password and creates the hash and then ma matches it to what's in the database okay um then the login server does this which is a uh, keyed sha256 i'm not very good at security but i know this is the way you do it so pay attention all right that'll take the user id which is um probably not the actual username takes a date makes a hash of that and sends that back to the client the client at this point disconnects sends this packet back to the game server after it connects and then the game server uses the same secret so it's basically like a key that both the login server and the game server have to check if the token is valid it also checks to see how long ago the date is on the login token and if the login token hasn't expired and it's a valid token then you let it get on the server Ugh. now i don't really need a login server yet because i don't have an account system or anything so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make a dummy interface for most of most of this stuff and we're just gonna log in straight to the to the um game server yes game server is a thing it's a, it's a word it's a word that I sometimes use. Okay, so um, I'm going to figure out how to do that. And once I start, I will be back with you. Okay. 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 So um, things and also stuff. Okay. So I have the client open here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate um, this is a neat trick if you want to implement something later. We're basically going to create an interface and then put a dummy implementation behind it to fake the whole getting the, the login token thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a file here. It's an interface. Um, I log in. sequence make this public because you have to make everything always public I don't know why it doesn't just add that keyword on its own but whatever um, then we want to have a delegate a delegate is a thing that it's basically a, a function reference that you can pass around so we basically do an unconnect, or oh, actually we can do it. Um, login complete handler. Um, and that will say, let's just give it a boolean word whether it's a success and then give it um we don't know yet what we're gonna use so we're gonna do this so the login sequence needs to have an event of this type on login complete and then it also needs um also needs a function to start the login start login now i don't know if we want to ip address is that a thing no that's not a thing um just just do this for now it's fine no, don't typo. Typos are bad. Okay, so we now have this. Um, then we go back to the main client and we're just going to have it. Does it have a start function? 
pretty sure it did have a start function. Let's see. Does it have a start function? No, it does not have a start function. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's completely okay. We'll just say when you're loading the content. Is that after loading the content? I don't know. Let's just put it here after you bind the keys. We'll just do like, no, we don't, not, not starting a frame. We're just making a thing. So we need public void to start. I don't even know if this needs to be a public function, but who gives a shit? Okay. So we're in the start function and we want to connect. So we need an object that has the thing. We'll just do it like this for now. We'll say there is a login sequence login and that gets passed to the container. Okay, so we go to so the container, the, the game gets made, something gives it a way to log in. We're not going to be an idiot and not assign this, so we're going to assign this. So this is what we use to log in. Um, bind, the keys are bound, which calls the start function, and then the start function is here. Um, so we want to first attach a function that will be called once we're done logging in, which is this. And then we want to start the login. So presumably whatever is implementing this interface will then log you in and once it's done logging you in, come here. At which point we will um, connect to the server. Okay, I'm gonna implement some of this off camera and then I'll bring you back. Okay? Okay. Okay, so I did a bunch of stuff. Um, let's just go through it in sequence. So I made a dummy login. So you can see it doesn't do anything. I actually need to put some code in here, but that's fine. I'll do that in a second. Um, so the program starts. It's creates the window, passes it the dummy login, okay, then um, that's stored, it goes to start, it says once I've logged in, go to this function, then starts logging in at this address with this port. Okay, once the login is complete, it will come here. I'm not checking success, I need to actually do that. lol okay so it checks if it's successful if it doesn't it prints something but it can't really fail at the moment so that's fine um it stores the login token and then creates a socket to connect to the server port and tells it if it's connected go here and once you're here you're sending the data from the token to the server which should receive it now i have set up the server to listen on the proper port and i've set it to debug client frames which means that when it gets messages it sends it shows data from them um let's see if it works or if i have done something really stupid and it doesn't which is likely so start the server start the thing I haven't put in the thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. I, I totally... Actually, let's just keep the server running. Might as well. Okay, so... I need to put stuff in here. Because I haven't used this at all. Okay, so... We're not using this function, so throw new not implemented exception. This is what you do when you have a function that you haven't implemented yet. You just have it throw an error that says, sorry, we didn't get to that. Um, so let's make a new login token. Var token is new login token. Token dot generate. And I can just leave this blank because it fills in the holes. So it generates the token which basically just 
puts the data in and then creates a hash using the secret key, which is this, which you shouldn't do it like this, but this is all temporary. You should also add some random padding data so it's more cryptographically secure, whatever hash, so there's less collisions. But we're currently not caring about that, so, so it creates the data, stores it, that's fine. Yeah, I, you could do an entire YouTube series just about how to program proper security, but I'm gonna spare you. Okay, so we've generated the token, and then we can really just, um, yeah, what you need to do when you use an event end, but this is interesting. You need to do this. And then you need to check if it's not nil. Or should I say null? Not sure. Which do you prefer, nil or null? Leave your comments and preferences in the comments section. Uh, I'm bad at this whole YouTube thing. Okay, and then if it's not nil, I'm going to keep saying nil for now. We're going to do this. And it's always successful, so that's fine. So this should then take us to this, which will set off everything else. Let's see if that works. Well, something certainly happened. I will be right back because this is a problem with my custom framework, which has nothing to do with what I'm doing. Okay, be right back. So, um, that was my bad. I didn't specify a size. It's four bytes for this thing and then eight bytes for this thing. And now that's working. Um, did I do everything? I think I did everything. Yeah, let's just see if it connects and gets the data then. Starting up the server, starting up the thing. And yep, it got a packet of 32 bytes, which is um, 256 bit, which is the size of the hash. Um, okay, now I need to figure out what I was going to do next. No, that's not wrong. All oh, right, yeah, so now the server needs to verify the thing. Okay, so now the server needs to verify the thing. So let's shut this all down. So this is working. Now the server needs... Oh, this is gonna be a bit, like the server is a bit messy. Like, this is the main server, there's a lot of stuff in there. So I will pause again, and I will bring you back when I started doing stuff. Okay, be right back. Okay, um, I had to change some stuff, but now it's working. So I was doing this wrong, I was only sending the hash, you also need to send the actual user ID and a date on the login server. Um, I wasn't doing that, I'm sending that now. So that gets sent to the server. Then I created this thing on the server side, it's a game client, has the same secret. So it gets a, a message, it gets the ID, the ticks, it verifies that the date isn't um, you have 30 seconds to use the token, basically. If you have a, a smaller date, then it says the date has expired. So it copies the hash out after that. Um, then it copies the data that you need to make the hash. Then it makes the hash just like the login server did, and then it just checks if they match. So let's see if that actually works. So you can see um, token data is okay and the token hash matched. Now if I change some of this, if I change like this to a one, oh, I didn't actually need to shut down the server. Okay, well that doesn't matter. See, you get a token hash mismatch because you didn't use the right key. And um, so let's change that back. 
Um, I don't know, how do, you, how do you do this? Can I actually? So let's make a date in the past. Two milliseconds minus, I don't know. That that should do it, probably. Oh, huh. huh. That's interesting. What date is that then? So it's Yeah, that's like in the past. Why are you not working? I don't know why you're not working. This is interesting. Let's go find out why it's not working. So we'll go to the server. Go here. Um, start this up. So what date is this? Yeah. Wait. Did I do this wrong? That's interesting. Huh. Um. Well, I'm gonna have to debug that, so I will be right back again. Huh. Well, I don't know what went wrong there, but I increased the value and now it's working as expected. So, this is a date in the past. It's currently to something UTC time. So the token has expired. So now we've been, we can check all that, which is cool. Cause then we can also do, can we not, can we not disconnect this? Is that not a thing that we can do? Can we, oh, we need to close it. Okay. Never mind. So then we just close the connection because clearly they're trying to log in even though they're not allowed to and here if we make it to the end send a string back so this is just a temporary thing that I'm doing to close off the episode today we will send can we send text please tell me I can send text oh god damn Okay, send. Please let me put in a string. Thank you. Now let's let's have it send hello client. Sure, that's fine. So that's um. make this the way it was otherwise we can't log in which would be very unfortunate and we will find our socket and do like connect to the message function i hate how it names these these automatically made functions okay so we're getting a a, a message now Um, I think data, yeah. So let's see. Private string server message. So normally you're supposed to do this nicely, like if message dot type is message type dot text. Yeah, let's just do it because it's good good practice and then you know that it's a text message so you can do is message dot data as string so this should be working and then we can do this so
Yeah, that'll do. So what this operator does, for those of you who don't know, it's called the null coalescing operator. It will use this left hand variable unless the value of this left hand variable is null, in which case it will use the right hand variable. It's kind of like the shorthand for the... Uh, I can't remember what the other one was called, but it's like you can do stuff like var text is server message isn't null and then hello YouTube so this is like a shorthand version where you say this gets evaluated if this part is true then it does the left hand if it's false then it does the right hand and this is just a shorter way of writing that so if all is well and I start up the server and then start the client, hello YouTube should change to hello client. And it works! It's amazing! It's like magic. And we can put in anything we want here um, on the server. Hello, idiot. It's a very abrasive server. It's, it's kind of mean, really. Hello, idiot. Well, you know, it's, you're an idiot too. So that's about as far as I'll go for the uh, first episode. Obviously, you know, this is not how you do it. You kind of want to have a be better messaging system than just sending raw data and doing a bunch of raw um, manipulation of it but that's going to be a future thing it, that's all part of um, building an MMO right now we have the client which is connecting to the server sending its login token which the server verifies is a legit login token at which point you're logged in it sent and the server sends the client a message and the client displays the message so technically this is already a client server well, it's not really an MMO yet, but it is a client server thing, which isn't bad for the first episode, I don't think. Um, because this is a new show, I don't really know yet how I'm editing this and making it interesting for you. I'm trying to keep most of the drudge work out of it. So it's like shortcuts of um, just me getting stuff done, which I think is more interesting to you. Um, if you have any suggestions about how I can improve the videos, maybe I don't explain things well enough, maybe I ramble too much or I talk too fast, just leave a comment and I'll try to do better in the future. Um, I'm not sure how often I'm, I'm going to be doing this series. I'm hoping weekly on top of Train of Thought, but we're just going to have to see how it all works out. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!